and uh, also a visiting research uh, researcher at uh, Microsoft. And about all these things, one very good thing to which I came to know that he has written five books, and those books have been, I mean, mean say just as one of the best books in the software engineering, and they have been translated in various languages, which are the most complicated languages of this world, like the Japanese, uh, Korean, uh, Chinese, and so on. So they are still uh, uh, one of the best and popular books in the software engineering. So without taking that much time, I would like to welcome Professor Pankaj Jolote and he is going to talk about uh, the topic of instant rankings. Now we know that this is such a topic and we are all we all are in that generation where we are divided into two groups. Either we try to accept this concept or we say no, it's not worthwhile. But now the time has come where either we like or not. The government and the common people, they are looking on this concept, including our rural students, they are looking at the QR ranking and IRF ranking and so on. And most of the institute, they have a, a small committee, a small setup, which is looking after this banking business. So this uh, has come up and now this is a concept which we need to understand uh, so that we are not uh, lag behind. So I would uh, uh, welcome Professor Pankaj Jalote and I would request him to give us a talk on his topic in the for the World Grand University. So let us welcome him. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting. Thanks for this uh, opportunity. Uh, you probably forgot to mention I also graduated from here. Uh, at least the students today wouldn't have been born at that time, that was in 1980. Uh, uh, that time there was no computer science. Uh, there was no computer science, so I uh, graduated uh, in electrical. I think the computer science program came maybe, maybe 84, 85. Do you remember the no? Department is 84, first batch is needed in 79. 79, Department is 84. Uh, before that, there was a computer science program, I think, run by... 78. Huh? 78. First batch. First batch. Admitted, Admitted in computer science in 78. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, uh, okay. It's a more talk it was later. So, while they set it up... Uh, so, in any case, uh, my term as director I applied to Delhi finished at two terms. They finished in, uh, last year. So I was on a one year sabbatical. And in this sabbatical, uh, instead of working in computer science, I had thought I would work on higher education. Uh, so just that itself sort of opened my eyes that higher education itself is a, is a big subject of research with many, many research centers across the world. Even a country like Australia, which has just 29. Universities has two very eminent and distinct, uh, very uh, capable research centers. Unfortunately, in our country, even though we have such a large education system, maybe the largest or the second largest, we really don't have any higher education. So if we do have education, we don't think it's worthy of research, I think, or, or lack of our resources, we can't address to them. So I did some work, started, you know more for my own understanding than, than of course as a faculty you always publish your work. It, it gets gets vetted whether what we're doing is right or not. So this thing that I will present to you to you uh, you know current science carried it. And there's some other work I did um, which uh, you know some international journal to pick it up about classification of universities in India. Never talked about it. So, let's see, the state of the art system. <laughs> Get working. Not just the state of the art, the state of the art. So, in any case, what I did in this, to so bring you at least uh, turn you up. So, I looked at the top 200 universities as per PhD ranking. You can take whatever, try to PhD. 
Um, and then I looked at the top 100. So if you, NIRF has distributed our system in uh, colleges, of course. And, okay, so there is one. And universities, engineering institutions, and then very specialized institutions, medical. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are तो वो हो पाएगा कि नहीं हो पाएगा? किसी को बुलाएं क्या? वो वो भी किस? बुलाने का चलो इस डॉन। आह, so N I R F has these five six categories, right? And then of course colleges which is we have forty thousand colleges. We have nine hundred or thousand institutions so which are uh, which has the authority to get degrees. Uh, so then, okay, so there's engineering and universities and then uh, medicine and more specialized ones. So they published the top 100 in NI in engineering, top 100 in universities, top 20 something here and there. 90% uh, of our student body is actually under engineering and universities. The so I took the top 100 in universities and top 100 in engineering colleges. There's some overlap, places like Jagannath have both. Um, uh, you have this thing, they show up in both. But by and large, this represents our world itself. And I thought let me just try to compare on some key parameters. So without drilling down the some key macro parameters, and what should those macro parameters be is, is, is is, I guess, a researcher's, researcher's cause, and of course, what you say about Germany. Um, okay, so I took, I took the three parameters as age, size, and funding. Because, in many ways, as we discussed, there is a good well, something is coming up. Okay, so I am ready to go. Just a comparison, it doesn't take you, it gives you some factual information. <coughs> but what do you make out of it is something that you have to subject to. Okay. So, why do you tell me how to move your hand? It's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about four times. So, background information, as you may know, we have about 900 universities from 40,000 colleges. Uh, some, most of these universities are really teaching universities, uh, but we don't have a way to differentiate a teaching university with a, with a research university, so we don't have a classification paper. <coughs> Why could Kasne say, ah, okay, maybe I should not call. Uh, so, as we all know, India, like so many developing countries, so many countries, not just developing, even European countries, would like to see some of their universities in top So It's in some sense become a matter of pride, a matter of benchmarking, but it's really, really something about, about the pride. And there are significant challenges uh, to make it there. So I'm going to discuss some of the key features I've already mentioned. Okay, so just to give you an idea, this is what is there currently in the, or this I used, I think, one year, two years back, like that. So, to its THE 200, this is the presence of the countries, right? So, US, UK are the largest, 
and you see Australia, Canada, I mean, this, this is when Australia has all together just 39 or 40 million users. That's all. Right? Uh, so the, the big players are there, and as you can see, France, etc., show up uh, uh, much later, many other European countries. So there is, there is really, really, <coughs> right, in many, many countries, you sort of see uh, where they show up. So it's a way to showcase your r and capabilities, etc. Now rankings, at least the global ones, depend almost entirely, mostly on this So here is the way the PHC for you. Citations impact is 30%. So that's the quality of research in some way. Citation is, a, is one measure. If you see teaching learning is 30%, but in that also, 3 and 4 are about the which is really a gain Right? And then research volume, papers published, research income, research education, international mix of staff and students, something. So, 60% directly to research, even in teaching, a good portion of it goes to research. International staff, etc., while you can do education, it really again is a proxy for this. So, it's, it's known that it is, it weighs research very much. That's why the top, top universities in terms of research. Now, in India, of course, we said these are not suitable for us. And of course, the, the NIRF came about, which is a you know, good ranking for our purposes in many ways. But our NIRF is an overall ranking with a strong weight to education, because that's what our system really is. Except some 30, 40 uh, universities which aspire to do some research, largely we are all uh, in the business of education. And so, teaching, learning, and resources is 30%, research productivity, etc., 40 or 30%. Graduate outcomes, industry, uh, inclusivity, perception. So it's fairly focused around, around teaching, though it has, of course, components of research. So it, as I mentioned, it, uh, it, um, it groups universities, engineering, management, etc. But we are looking at only the top 100 universities and top 100 engineering institutions. Of course, I think all I can show up. So the first thing that I look, looked at was age, but why should we look at it? So age does matter. Right? Age matters because you have more time to contribute, therefore bigger the contribution. Of course, you, are, you have had made so much impact in it. So Oxford, Cambridge, all those who show up, they started in about 1500. I mean, you have had so many essentially of making an impact uh, and so on. Awards, recognition. All of these are somewhat insufficient. Larger, the older, of course, they attract uh, people also in culture, their history attracts people. And more, more students over the decades, then you have more people in the in, in senior positions, etc. So even if you look at IIT trajectory, in the last two decades or so, uh, the, the, the IIT visibility and importance, etc., has substantially grown as they have matured. And we have CEOs and various very, very big people, etc., coming out of this thing. So if we look at the age distribution, <coughs> these are the these are the numbers. In the top 200, the ones created before 1900 is 65%. And then you have some of these. Those created after 75 is just 50. Right? Just look at these two, two sides of it. Now, if we come to India, created before 1900 is just six of them. Maybe one of them is common. Just, just, just it, right? Uh, the first ones were Calcutta, Madras, Bombay, uh, 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 then perhaps a few more. I think these may be the, these may be the three main ones before 1900, like today. And if you look at after 75, we have 65% of the universities and 54% of the heavy duty public. Vast majority, maybe more than half, right? 60%. But created after 75, while here you're looking at only 7%. It's a completely different 
absolutely the mirror image of the distribution that we see there. Right? So first is just is it was a bit of an eye opener for me, but I mean I now let's look at size. Now size matters actually eventually no matter which way you look at it. We like to keep things small, that's our choice, but size matters immensely in research. There is absolutely no doubt. First of all, we are not just size of faculty, then just the volume of research will definitely go up. You saw volume is one of the uh, one of always the parameters. And there's always some bit of a multiplier effect when you when you put multiple people together, there is always some uh, there is uh, there is uh, more discipline, so you are impacting so many more areas rather than just a few. And and it is sort of uh, somewhat known that if you have worked with different disciplines and different countries, they actually need to some higher citation. Presumably, the quality of work when you put uh, minds which are very different together uh, tends to be tends to be more. And if you have large size of students. Then there are so many more in out there in the economy, in the world, that are making an impact through engineering, through leadership, through what, what have you, and there's more of them making an impact. And so, and then not only that, large number of them are in corporations and influence. Remember, influence is also a factor perception. So you have that many more people out there uh, creating perception for you, for higher prestige, etc. So let's look at the size distribution of the top 200 in that. So size in terms of the number of students, the number of universities which have less than 5,000 students is 5. Virtually none in the top level. Caltech maybe some other such ones. It is 5, those are the kinds of places which we show up. Maybe some in coal, in France, and so forth. And we look at size more than 10K, 90% of them are more than 90% of the top of that 90%, of that 180, 125 are more than 30,000. Okay, now let's look at the situation in India. Less than 5K, a vast majority, half the universities and two thirds of our engineering colleges are less than. Engineering institutions, not colleges, they're not considered colleges either. Colleges is a separate category of 40,000 altogether. We're talking about engineering institutions like IIT. IIT, um, uh, Zalapur Engineering College, etc. It's an institution, so on, right? NIG, two thirds are less than 5,000. And less, the greater than 10K is only 7. And if I remember correctly, almost all of them are private. You can name it, VIP would be there, Manipal would be there, uh, some of these would be there. They are uh, big in terms of student size. Uh, but there we know it's really largely teaching focus institution. Size more than 20 K is even smaller. These two are, I think, both both of them. So in terms of students, we are again completely lopsided. There's only five which are less than five K, which is none, none most, two percent, and we are more than half. And two thirds sitting in that column, on that level. And when you look at size from the from sense of faculty, that's our low way to look at size. Both both are correlated. Uh, there's some ratios we work with. So size in terms of faculty, size less than 500, there's only 10, 12 of them. And size greater than 1,000, a vast majority for the Okay, now we come to our case, size less than 500, almost all the universities tend to be larger, so there's 70 to 80%, and here look at it, 95% of our engineering institutions are less than 500. This data is 2 or 3 years old, I believe I did a for of example, and maybe some of the two other IITs have crossed that, but not in time. And size more than 1000 is just one year, and the university. DHU would be one over here, some of us would be there. And this one is undoubtedly a value. Of course, size of faculty is huge, is, is, is matters 
which has tremendously, as I said, because the more we, uh, particularly if it's a research university, which is where all faculties are engaged in research, then it opens up so much interdisciplinarity and other possibilities in terms of uh, Okay, funding, of course, is, is the most critical component in any way deciding the success. You can't put the faculty students together and not get funding to, and still hope they do excellent research. That won't happen. Uh, funding situation in India has never been very good, uh, particularly for research, uh, uh, research university. But now getting numbers for funding is very hard. So we did something, right? So, but just to, just to understand, research universities, if you want to call it research universities, which like the IIT is, they are expensive, right? This kind of infrastructure, lab, uh, you know, the high, high PC computing, etc., etc., just, just fancy equipment is needed. And then, you need to have your faculties high, high cost, simply because A, you must be paid as well as you can, B, you have to keep the teaching load low so they can do research, which means you need more faculty. So the faculty cost becomes high. So one way I measured, I tried to get it, the cost per faculty uh, uh, as, a, as an indicator, and I used to do that earlier, cost per faculty uh, of the institute in a research university can be a few times that of the cost per faculty in a non-research university. Labs, cost of faculty, PhD students, travel, etc., etc., all you have there, it can easily be a factor in the field. Now, looking at, so we went to the websites of 150 to 200, because the PhD does not get funding information, so we went to the website, and we found that the average cost per faculty, average expenditure per faculty, is about half a million dollars. How do we get that? So I went to the web pages, look at the total budget for the year, do I get that? That's as simple as that. And the averages in this, in this number of different countries varies a little bit, but not that much, right? So this data is incomplete, we couldn't get all 50 of them in some countries, we just didn't get any data. Now in India, per faculty expenditure of top 30 universities, how do I get that? This again, I use the NIRF data of last two years. This time I saw NIRF as a published in the data. <laughs> so maybe, maybe this thought that people are using the data to do analysis and it's probably not good, I don't know what. I, I said that this paper, in fact, we went and look the data has to be In any case, is of the order of 0.1 million is what, $100,000, that's about 70 lakhs. And you can imagine, that's, that's pretty good. And this we are looking at top 30 of the top 100. So that's still pretty good, I mean, he thing, right? But if you look at the international situation, it's just, just, just not comparable, and I'll come to one point there. Research funding on the other hand, so this is just per faculty, how much of the institute spend. When you look at research funding, again, it's kind of not so easy to find, but thankfully for the top 100 universities, again, you see an IRM data, the average research funding per institution is just about 20 crores a year. And if you convert it for faculty, it comes down to just about five lakhs. Now, in the US, that's where I think got the data, they have there is a, there's something called Carnegie Classification Framework. It does something, it identifies 300 plus universities as research. In that, it divides into best, highest research, uh, medium, uh, you know, high research and medium research, R1, R2, R3. So I looked at the lowest category. There, the average RD. Expenditure for faculty is around 50. It's about 150k in R2, it's about double of that in R1. So now, if, so we look at total per faculty cost and the RD grant. Now you can argue that our people cost is low, no doubt about it, somewhat low, very good cost. But hey, look, we, we pay the same for almost everything. All the infrastructure that, that you buy, all the equipment you buy, in fact, we may be paying more than what international places pay. Travel is the same cost, when you go to the same spend the same money. As I said, maybe more. Maybe the digital library probably cost, will cost the same. Almost all equipment costs the same. The only thing we have is, is, is a cheaper uh, manpower, uh, perhaps by a factor of three or four, but not 
not any more factor of payment. So really speaking, you can't justify these ratios other than saying that we are heavily under invested in research. So that, that's what you will end up with. So just to summarize, and then I have a few slides to open the discussion as to why this may be relevant, right? So age, we are completely lopsided. Only 70% are uh, created after 75, so India top is the same. By the way, all the universities in India today, 900, are really more than half have been created in this century. Or, yeah, I have created now, but I have done that in the This century, including the life today. Size, 70% are more than 1,000. We have only, only 6% are less than 500. India is extremely really lopsided. Right? And in terms of students, 90% uh, are more than 10K and uh, very few have less than 5,000 in India. Most have less than 5,000 in India. And funding, as I said, is, is uh, one fifth of what we can see. Now, clearly, of these factors, nothing can be done about it. We gain independence, 47, that's Till then, we were driven by British, who had no interest in creating research universities, etc., etc. So we can't do anything about it. We are a young nation as an independent, uh, independent nation. I see we have to be But size and funding are actually then of policy. They are the other. So that we can't blame anybody for that. So now I have just three sides. Right? What do we do about size? What do we do about funding? And just should we care about these factors? I think that's the first question which all of us will have. So world, world rankings tend to affect behavior. As you uh, pointed out, the each institute has set up some committees. This is world over, not just in India. Everywhere there are small groups of people looking at, at the ranking. It changes the, changes the behavior of the community. So it can be detrimental to the university's mission if what you do is not aligned with your mission. If you do it for ranking only and happens to conflict with your mission, if it happens to, then you can actually hurt yourself. So if your education is your mission and research is a very good mission, which by the way a lot of universities have, very useful and completely right mission, to start looking at ranking and say that this research will be completely out of, out of character and completely take them in a, in a part of no, no way. They might have to be a lot of opinion. However, goals, so goals of the university, I believe, should be aligned completely to the mission and vision. Unfortunately, we don't often articulate our mission and vision so well. But our best effort should be to achieve them. If there is if nothing stated, then you do whatever. I'm assuming that institutions, organizations have some kind of a vision and mission as to what they're doing. And I believe decent rankings should naturally result for a research university which has research as a stated mission, research excellence as a stated mission. Uh, because it, and achieving decent rankings can only be a desirable goal. Because research is a mission for you. Therefore, and research is a global, global endeavor. You can't say I do India research only. Okay. Research has always been a global endeavor. So, if your research is a mission, it makes sense to 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 benchmark to show up in a decent place in that. It does it does support uh, that you are doing good quality research. Okay. But. I think these micro level, I mean, you know, 125 and now I move to 110 or whatever, that is, that is clearly, you know, we in the, we, we who give grades, always talk to, please, grade them in ABCD or something like that. I mean, what does 2 and 3 mean? I mean, what does, well, I understand this year, this is 1, next year, this is 1, I mean, that's completely bullshit, right? But a broad category, where you know, are you in the top 50, top 100? You know, in this project. That makes sense, actually. It's like a grade, where and where he places it. If the A grade, A bank, B, B plus, what happened? Makes sense to do that, not get uh, taken, taken down. Right? And at least in a very small way, at the reply we tried to follow it. We have a stated mission vision, and we, we had some, some uh, this thing on ranking. 
But we say we we'll continue doing what we have to do, and if we need to improve a little bit there, and maybe even perception, and maybe even data and this thing, then we will do it without changing the direction. And we showed up in, in BRICS ranking, of course, I mean, US BRICS ranking, a small, you know, very, very small, but you know, uh, global rankings as we way to it. Um, and then the NIR has a normal thing. So, this is my view about ranking. That rankings should not determine your behavior in the sense that you, you change your direction for the sake of ranking. But if you have a direction to go in, you continue going in that particular for research university, non research universities can't make it a global ranking. If you are a research university, then you continue on your mission and it is good to sort of say where you may fall and sort of benchmark is then show up there and see where your deficiencies may be with the business. Now what do you do about size? As I mentioned, size matters tremendously, particularly in the discipline. I mean, actually if you start looking, I've been doing some research in that, the best known tech universities, since we are in tech school, I'm giving that example, have converted them, or many of them, have converted them to multidisciplinary. So two very specific examples I can give you. Uh, one can look at MIT, but MIT I think is there. Georgia Tech uh, is a very interesting. Started as an engineering college institution with I think three disciplines. Okay? But just over the years, I have data somewhere else. It has now seven schools, engineering school being one of them. Computing is a school for them. Seven schools with, uh, I think, about 30 departments, right? And, and they are 25,000 or so, or so, 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 In Singapore, NTU, NTU started completely as a teaching place, forget about research, it is not even started, didn't even start as a tech institute, so to say. It was meant as a tech training institute. And this is an 80th. Yeah, I think. Right? And now it has 30,000 plus. It has 10 or so very fancy collaborative research lab. It, uh, I think it, in Asia, in, top, in, in under 50, it is either top 3 or something like that, etc. etc. All those parameters are there. And actually some of our old, some of us old members may even remember that even as little as 20, 30 years back, uh, NPU was not considered a place to sort of go as a visiting faculty. And US was a place in Singapore. NPU was not necessary. But in the last 20 years, it is a small thing. Again, broadened it completely. And this is, broadening is not the only story. Of course, lots of money has been formed behind there. So, so, some institutions, so therefore, I think, while uh, earlier we were not, uh, you know, as a, as a young nation, we were not uh, sure of scale, but I think we must experiment with scale and multidisciplinary. We actually tend to break these So, some institutions, I'm not saying all, for example, a few IITs can be motivated and funded to reach a level of uh, 10,000 faculty, 20,000. Two, three, five, I don't know how to take it back. And now at least in some industry sectors have shown that you know this whole notion that us Indians can't handle uh, scale and this that professional is all now bunker, right? We have at least ten IT industries, ten IT companies with more than what, I don't know how many, with more than a lakh employees, right? I think there must I think there must be more than ten. I four mean, five I know. But I think there And there's so many other sectors that have shown that we have matured here, we have beyond 70s, 80s, and so on and so forth, where we can only manage. So we have tried, the other approach is that we have tried breaking of institutions, as we know, PSU and some others, where we break off institutions and create smaller ones. But we should perhaps experiment with merging and consolidating institutions into mega r institutions. So this is what Australia in the 1880s, some reforms, called Dawkins reforms, 
right, in a massive consolidation, amalgamation is what we call it, amalgamation exercise. And many of the universities they created at that time for amalgamation all show off now in, in, as a global research. Uh, by the way, France, I think only last year or two years before, had launched this mega university, which they call MIT in France. I think by 13, putting some 13 or some institutions there. If you just search for uh, uh, France trying to create MIT, something you saw. In, in, I forget the name now. So they did it. Just now. And France was very clear, I believe, I'm told, it was entirely for 19%. The university is only a few show off. But they also tend to add goals and so on. So size is really something. <coughs> but somebody has to start thinking. Funding. So what is our model of funding in India? Typically as great for everything, right? We just sort of distribute it relatively equally. Right? Uh, that kind of distribution just cannot work. Research universities have to be accepted that they will be very expensive. And if they will be, then you have to support them disproportionately. So China started this whatever their program, uh, uh, 3% of the universities or something else get, take up 9 to 10% of the funding uh, that is given on for this. In Australia, if you look at the funding, RD funding given, top 20 universities by the of all of it. UK single pattern. It has to be the same. In US also the top universities get their uh, most so, we have to find ways to disproportionately fund some universities which have proven track record of this. So, two, two things I've, uh, from my studies that I've shown up. Uh, one is, of course, uh, there should be substantial increase in this project funding. I was discussing it somewhere else. I mean, our project funding, where the DSP rating is that, is so small, right? Five lakh, or the average of the funding is it's nothing. So we really have to increase this competitive grant funding substantially. And then also I said on these committees, there's always this thing, let's try to get to more. But let's say that is merit, you want others to come up, but you have to really start uh, uh, respect, respecting for them. And the second is, if you don't have a model in India at all, for both you can Australia follow it, is that there is a general R&D grant separate from their budgetary support, which is committed every five or seven years based on your past five or seven years are in the So let's say you put this five of thousand, five thousand crores, and you say it will be distributed based on these things to 20 universities or 50 universities. And it's the, the one which is the, uh, the strongest in r &D. will get the largest part. So, naturally you are supporting those who are stronger, more, so they will get stronger, and yet you are not leaving anyone out, so you next cycle somebody who is uh, who is doing this thing, can improve their performance in next five years and can do that. But this funding, which is not public way, will allow a university to start new direction, to just do, do sky research, to do that research for which funding is not available, and that's a, a lot of research by the way. Funding is tied to education only the case. So there's so many problems that you can't get funds for in sponsored research. All those still need support. So these kinds of funding tend to work. So so you know, at least these kind of initiatives can help in providing support to research universities so we can make it to yeah, that's all I have. Okay, so as I said these three were my discussion slides, the rest is data. To the writings matter, size, you need to do everything about everything you want to, and funding, you need to do everything you want, and, and if you should, how should you do it? I assume that we should, and this is what we should do. The size also, as I said, I think we should now have some institutions, not all, some institutions in the interpreting of the and this is Okay. Let's say. Right, 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 right,
Yeah. So the sun is greater than thousand in India, which is really in Sudhis. Oh, I think it's likely to be real. Life will be real. Real. I doubt it. But that's uh, also university. That's huh? Also. That's also a university. It's not just a technological thing. It's a lot of yeah. So it's not an engineering institute per se. An engineering institute is smaller than. I just took no, just a second. I took an IR category. I'm not challenging them. They put there. I take it from there. Okay. The second thing is that uh, while your data seems interesting, your argument that the reach should get richer for research for research is yeah. actually flawed for the Indian context. And I'll give you an example for it. The thing is that our feeding streams for all our research is actually our schools and our universities. Unfortunately, the pot of money which is getting distributed is the same. And it's getting same is going to research, same is going to institute, uh, education. And what this is doing is that we have been systematically been ignoring the school education and the university education systems. Universities such as DHU, Delhi University used to have fellows of the Royal Society in their ranks. And they used to publish papers in nature and science. The Madras University is supposed to be the pioneer for biophysics research in the whole world. It was the first department of biophysics that was started. And from that, we have persons who now are finding it very difficult to get a PhD admission in a university of eminence in India. So there is something wrong. And I think we are looking at the whole problem incorrectly as far as India is concerned. If India has to make up for whatever we want, ranking has to be a consequence of what you do. I completely agree with that. But we are looking at it all wrong. You need to go back to the roots. And you need to strengthen it more. And anyway, research is an ideation challenge. You don't want to do it with all the machines available. You build your own machines, you create them as you wish. And eventually somebody commercializes them and sells it back to the others. Like we are buying it from the others. And that's the way we should approach this whole problem. So that's, that's a completely legitimate thing. I disagree with that, but that's a completely legitimate thing. Not ranking performance. Nobody will say, please don't don't quit ranking the performance. Ranking, by the way, both of them are still kind of agencies. Ranking is at most one indicator. But there are for these sites so many how where did you publish, how much did you publish, what is your citation, etc. Et so it's, it's a much bigger exercise, much bigger exercise. What impact have you had in society in terms of technology transfer, idea transfer? So if you look at the exercise these uh, countries do, it is enormous. In fact, they are you should be working. So it's a big exercise. So I, I sort of included the RD funding is there. RD infrastructure will of course get improved, but do that. Yeah. I mean, that's finally, ideally, all of it is there because you know, there is only so much money available. So that's another reason why, why I believe if you have so much money available, there are two ways to do it. You distribute it to a lot of people and leave it. Or you decide to say, hey, look, why everybody will get a little, some of them will get a lion's share, so we call it control. So that's completely.
also internationalization is a very good Again, I just put it I'm not challenging either in IRF or this thing or trying to understand deeper into it. That's not my intent. They do something they do. I just took it there. I'm more interested in education and research in general. So I don't know why they do. Well, they have some thoughts. Look, look at both sides there. Both sides, why did they do this? Why did they do this? There are reasons, all of them are rational reasons. I'm just saying, I, don't, I just don't think it's worthy of my effort to understand why they chose this parameter. I'm more interested in what is happening in research. So, what I do? So, one data point seems to be many of the top institutes, they have been what is your problem? I think Germany doesn't do that. And, uh, and uh, uh, well, Singapore, I don't know what you consider as a thing. I think most Singapore universities are in English. And if I'm not mistaken, at least this new one in France that's created is also going to be in English. But yeah, China probably makes, I mean, I don't have an idea. Um, I, I don't. Well, in another way, if you look at it, science research, if you're talking about so the focus is on research, I think de facto it has now been accepted that English has the medium of expression for research. So even Chinese are publishing on English. So that's a much bigger point than this one. In our case, thankfully, we, we are reasonably well equipped to. You can discuss in whatever language you want to, but finally we are reasonably very equipped to express our results in the English language. That doesn't seem to be too much of a very fine thing. Characteristics which the student has. 
So they say it becomes a signaling value. It's more more an argument against the elite ones in, in US. In fact, this guy who wrote this book offered a half a thousand dollar fellowship to anyone who would get into Harvard but would not take it. His hypothesis is if you are good enough to get in Harvard, you will do well regardless of where you study. Then it is. Uh, what I'm coming to is, I think you need to start looking at your box more rather than just the intake. Yes, good intake will make life a little bit easier, no doubt about it. But I think you need to be a little bit more about this. We still pick up top things. And if the selection process, maybe the exam is doing something, then we need to go and look at it. But we're still looking at top 2% of the, what, 15 lakh things we can do. Oh, so maybe they need to maybe have a serious issue where in fact of the point that he was raising that maybe the schools are doing. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. So uh, IIT so far, uh, the better ranking than older IITs does not fit into the size based on the experience. IIT so far, okay. ranking better than many of the older IITs. So how can one explain that in terms of size, age, family? Who's like, how So, you know, I mean, first of all, I mentioned three factors, and it should be, it should have been evident, I should have stated it. If you're old and large, does not make it, does not mean that you will get somewhere. There are many, many in US itself, there are many, many, many old universities which are very large and you are so up to the level. So these are not any way sufficient conditions, first of all. Right? So it, it being older and large, etc., does not necessarily make it. Uh, make it so coming to your this thing, older versus new, first of all, just because a newer one makes it, it's not necessarily an anomaly. Which is what we think it is. Uh, so I don't know what they, what they are doing, what these are doing. I have not, uh, as I said, ranking. Inside the ranking, I have not gone in. So I don't know. Okay, great. Ah, oh, yes. What is the role of academic administrators? Academic administrators. So, one thing which I get a sense when you go to many of these universities, many of them seem to be working with a very sort of some kind of a mission to it. Not mission that you finish in the next five, ten years. But they are quite driven in terms of trying to do their And I think those things, finally they have to be owned by, by faculty because there is no other way in academic history. But I think those are seeded, driven, uh, whatever word you want to use, by the environment. So while, while the faculty has to own it and, and make, make it happen, but setting up the direction through a process of that, setting up some aspiration, putting some uh, internal policies, this, that, to make those aspirations happen, I think those are all going to be role of the uh, leadership of the institution for leadership doesn't work. Work is done by I think we have to say that all the big ones, all the ones which have brought the world, you have visionary leaders. Huh. So leadership at least in Bharat has made it leadership. It is what I that decided what I'm saying. I'm saying the but I'm saying the role is to set up a direction to make sure people feel excited about you going somewhere and not just sort of staying where you are. Give a sense because all of us want to be going, it's, uh, you know, a higher and more uh, just staying in work, whatever, contributing to a larger report. And those can be set up in an institution, you think. Because also there are lots of universities, you know, which are just sort of there because there's no direction set up, there is no uh, motivation, leadership. But academic institution, finally, finally, whatever it is. The reason I'm saying is, it's not somebody sitting in some office and sets up some goals and visions. Because that doesn't work in that. It has to happen in a way that people get excited, you know, the faculty, the students, etc. But it finally emanates from there. Leadership completely agrees that it is very important 
It is the one that sets up the direction and movement and excitement. Like so, if there is a value problem in India, it is because of the academic leadership. Uh, it could be. So, there could be many other causes. And academic leadership is very hard to. <laughs> how do you compare? I mean, that fellow in Oxford also has a PhD in 20 years experience. And the fellow in Madaras uh, is doing work. Also, so, I wouldn't know how to compare. It. You can't quantify it. <laughs> It's a great institution. Yeah, it's a great institution. I still have all my views and all. So I'm not in touch with the last eight ten years. So that is something you have to see. But I've already said you know, the thing that I was saying to the bottom. Is there a sense of connection? Is there some excitement? That direction, etc., will have to be set up there, uh, or will have to be uh, uh, driven through there. But this will give you a sense of you know, are there movements from there, is there something If all those things are happening, then ranking, etc., is a blip in the radar. But if those things are not there, then this may be a trend. Thank you. 